Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Yeah, so this is just after the yeah. <laughs> So, middle of the week, so, but not nice somebody could come. It's not, the normal days we have programs, but, <coughs> but we have uh, this uh, special guest, as we announced, that uh, um, Satchit Anandas. Yeah, Sat not Satchit Ananda now, <laughs> but Satchit Ananda. <laughs> it's a different. Satchinanda means the son of Sachi, that's Rochitana's name. But Satchitananda is different. <coughs> I actually thought I actually thought uh, in the beginning when I heard about Satchinanda that it was Satchitananda Swami. <laughs> Alright. He has been uh, residing in America and uh, both USA and Canada for many years. But of course, coming from India and uh, disciple of what is Jerusalem for me, and uh, is uh, giving many different seminars, uh, different places in the world, and he has agreed to. It's very eager to preach, so we should be very eager <laughs> to listen. No, and welcome, Hare Krishna. Thank you. So uh, I have. Uh, Requested him to because he he had a Delandra coming was it? Delandra? Delandra. Ah yes, he will come. Yeah. Uh, he had a different options. He had a different options of seminars. <coughs> so I choose uh, Sikshastaka. So he will speak on Sikshastaka. So Sikshastaka is the uh, text, the, the only text that Rajatana composed himself, isn't it? Or wrote himself, <coughs> more or less. And uh, it contains the essence of the whole progress of the Sanctum. <coughs> so, today or tomorrow? So, uh, please listen carefully. And <laughs> yeah. We just, uh, I mean, we just, two times this year we have to move forced to move the temple. So we are a little bit, uh, what do you say? In turbulence. In turbulence <laughs> and, and, and a little bit uh, affected by, you know, it's a big operations all this. So, but we, by the mercy of the Lord, we got this last move was very smooth. <coughs> it happens with the help of so many devotees. In some or other it managed to get this in place and here we are a little bit more at least a little bit more secure <coughs> because it's uh, it's from property so Hare Krishna yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going in exile now <laughs> <laughs> hiding <laughs> Krishna has strange okay. ways yeah so, whatever happens, eventually it will happen for the best. Yeah, we believe so. <clears throat> so thank you for inviting me here, Tapas Prabhu, and all the Vaishnavas present. My, accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Nitai Gorsundar. Yes. yes. Nitai Gorsundar Ji Ki Jai. Jai. <laughs> Jagannath Baldev Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai. So, I seek the blessings of everyone present, all the listeners, senior Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis. One question, do you know uh, Krishna Abhishek? From? He's Bengali, but he's, he's in, in America. He's, he's preaching in New Vrindavan. No. Okay. No. In New Vrindavan? No, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he is, has taken a postdoc, you know, uh, He's university educated, so ah. he works in that field. I see. He, he's in. No, no, I personally don't know him. No, okay, no. He's, he's a Tamar Christian or something, so I see. And, uh, and uh, now he's six are from Raga, perhaps. And I see. No, because these, his, his, his family was into Jagannath worship. Ah. These are his deities. Okay. Because yeah. they, when he was a student, he was visiting here, and 
these are formed exactly as in Jagannath Puri. They mm -hmm. are made in Jagannath Puri. I see. The same. Pro uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see. Yeah. And uh, when he went to Denmark, he forgot the bag in the bus. <laughs> so they returned with the bus back to <laughs> Stockholm. <laughs> but it is. He and then, wanted to stay. <laughs> yeah, and then this uh, other Indian mother, God, God sister, of him, said, they don't want to be with you because you're not taking care. You're too busy with your studies. So they stay there for now quite a few years. But now he wants them back because now he's finished with his studies and he wants them for his preaching programs. And Very good. <laughs> well, you have to ask them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyways, um, thank you very much for inviting me here. Um, Prabhu decided to pick on this topic for the seminar, Sikstashtakam, uh, Chaitanya Sikstashtakam. So, how many of you all have heard about Chaitanya Sikstashtakam? Please raise your hands. All of you. Very nice. And like Prabhuji said, it is one of those rare compositions that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself composed. He actually composed two. Yeah. The other one is Jagannathashtakam. Ah, yeah, yeah. Kadachit Kalindi Tata Vipina Sangeeta Taralo Muda Viri Nari Kamala Swada Madhupa and everybody knows this line. <laughs> Jagannath Swami Nayana Patagami Nayana Patagami Bhavatumi So that is in every stanza Mahaprabhu has this composition. <laughs> Jagannath Swami Nayana Patagami Nayana Patagami Bhavatumi. So again, I seek the blessings of all the Vaishnavas present and may the words that emanate from my mouth be pleasing to the Lordships, Nitai Gaur Sundar, Srila Prabhupada, Devar Gauri, Acharyas and all the listeners. And if there's something that you like, all credit goes to our founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada and, our, and his sincere followers. <coughs> Without their mercy, I would I don't think I would have been able to uh, come here this far mm -hmm. in Krishna consciousness. And I constantly seek blessings so that I can continuously do more and more seva. So, <clears throat> before going into the Sistastakam, shall we all quickly chant that together? Does everybody know it by heart or do we need to get a copy? Uh, I don't think everyone knows by heart, but... What we have here is it's a songbook. It's there. It's in the songbook. Maybe there. Yeah, it is in the songbook. Yeah, song 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 so you all can sh share it. Yeah, you have it on the app, yeah. yeah. And, and if you can open up the app, that would be nice. Yeah, Everybody has it. Let me know so that we can start. Usually, this seminar takes about a good five hours. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and it has got a lot of deep, deep, it has got a lot of deep meaning inside, besides just the translation that we are used to. So those who are, Hare Krishna, those who are, interested uh, should attend both the days and take advantage of this wonderful composition and it is so amazing so amazing that it will just simply blow our minds once we understand the deeper nuances of the Chaitanya Sistastakam So we can start, we can sing all together. That way we save some time. Cheto Darpana Marjana Mahada Vagni Nirvapana Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vitaranam Vidya Vadu Jeevanam Ananda Bodhi Vardhanam Pratipadam Purnam Bridswadanam Sarvatma Stapanam 
परम विजयते श्री कृष्ण संकीर्तन नाम नाम कारी बहुदा निज सर्वशक्तिर्पित निमे गृशी तव कृपा भगवन ममयपी सुंदर जगदीश काम मम जन्मनी जन्मनी ईश्वरे भवताज किं कर पति विषमे भवाबुद कृपया तव पाद पंकज स्थित चिंतया नयन गलत अश्रुधारया वदन गृढ़या गिरा पुलचित वपु कदा तव नाम गृह नेश भविष्य युगाषेरा चक्षुषा प्रवशाइत सुनियाइत जगत सर्व गोविंद वीरहे नमे आश्लेष्य पादरता दिनुमा आदर्शन मर्म कर्तो करो यथाथाधाधाटो मत्णनाथ सी चैतन्य शिष्टाष्टक की श्रीला प्रभुपा चैतन्य महाप्रभु की गौर प्रेमानंदे सो Before we actually, Jai. Before we actually go into the Chaitanya Sista Stakam, there will be some parallel translation. No, no problem. It's a Russian. It's okay. Before we actually go into the Chaitanya Sista Stakam, we have to understand very briefly. who chaitanya mahaprabhu is and unless and until we don't have a proper understanding why he came then we are not really called gaudiya vaishnavas it's very important and being a gaudiya vaishnava means we should be extremely proud and extremely thankful that we have been given admittance into this university or college where we can actually attain the topmost prema or love of god every one of you of course has heard about chaitanya mahaprabhu and everything in this material world and the spiritual world the entire creation per se everything emanates from krishna the vedic scriptures the essence of the vedic scriptures shrimad bhagavatam and the vedanta sutra the very first three words is janmadi yasya that everything creation sustenance and the annihilation happens from you o krishna so there are so many different qualities that manifest and because god or krishna has them we have them everything 
The only difference is that here the qualities that we have, we have all the qualities of God. And one of the most appropriate names of God is Krishna. You have already heard that before. Because he's the most attractive. He's got the I mean, there's nobody who is more beautiful than God. There's nobody who has got more strength than God. There's nobody who has got more knowledge than God. There is nobody who is more renounced than God. There's nobody who is as famous as God. And there's nobody who is as beautiful, beautiful as God. Rupa. So these six qualities, if are known in Sanskrit, they are known as bhaga. And one means one who possesses these. So one of the most common names of God in Sanskrit is Bhagavan. But better than that is even because these qualities attract us. We find that in our day-to-day -day practical experience, somebody is very beautiful. Let's say there is a model or an actor or an actress. It stops traffic. Ma'am, can I have your autograph? Thousands of people run behind them because they are attracted to their beauty. Somebody is extremely rich, supposing a very, very big business person or an industrialist comes to town and he's going to be the keynote speaker at a university. All the seats are taken. All the seats are full in the hotel ballroom because they want to hear. And sometimes they pay thousands of dollars or euros to just to hear a very successful business person who is very wealthy. So wealthy people also attract. Similarly, people who have got fame, they attract. People who are very powerful in strength, physical, bodily, physical strength, they even attract people. Otherwise, the wrestling channels would be off the grid. Right? People spend thousands and thousands of dollars seeing wrestling matches and seeing the prowess of very powerful people because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very uh, extraordinary talent. So beauty, fame, knowledge, renounce. If you come across a very very saintly person who has got nothing to do with the material world. Thousands of people throng to temples or churches or mosques just to have an audience of that person because he's extraordinary. He doesn't care about, the, he's not attached to the material things. So like these, these six qualities, somebody who's extremely knowledgeable, say a big professor, Professor Albert Einstein, the, the Nobel laureate, Right here in Sweden, that's where they give out the Nobel Prizes for extra, extraordinary activities, including education. He may not be the most beautiful or the handsome person in the world, if you see his face. Or Donald Trump. Unfortunately, he's not the most handsome either. It looks like somebody described that as an eagle's nest on his head. His hair is like that. Huh? He's wearing like not, a, not a wig, but he's wearing a nest of a bird. But he's very wealthy. So he's got attracted. And that is because of his wealth. He, he became the most famous person in the world. The President of the United States. Undoubtedly. So if somebody's got all these six. To an unlimited extent. That person is called Bhagavan. Or that is so attractive. He attracts everyone. Therefore he's called all attractive. And in Sanskrit. The simple word for all attractive is Krishna. Krish means to attract and Na means to all. Now, because everything emanates from Krishna, all qualities, we can even think of good qualities and so-called bad qualities, like stealing, greed, anger. Now, these are all very bad qualities. But when they are in the material <coughs> world, they take a perverted form. But when they are in the spiritual world, or they take a spiritual dimension, and they are for the pleasure of Krishna or the pleasure of his devotees. For example, when Krishna steals butter, it is stealing. Stealing is not a good thing, but it is for the pleasure of his devotees he does that. It is not that he doesn't have enough food in his house. <laughs> Nanda Maharaj has gave away 900,000 cows in charity at his birth. And his mother Yashoda would never believe when the gopis used to complain that Yashoda, Yashoda, your son came and today he broke the pots and he stole our butter. And Yashoda would say, why would he do that? Just take a look. How many cows we have in our Goshala? We actually have so much surplus milk and cream and butter and milk products that we send it to Mathura. That's our business. It's like, you know, if you have a multi, multi billion, billion or trillionaire and then you complain to that trillionaire that your son came and stole two euros in, 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 my, in my house when he visited. You think he's going to believe that? Why would he do that? So similarly, 
these qualities that apparently look very bad, including greed, is, is something when used in Krishna's service or the, that quality we all have. If we just simply have to shift gears, the greed that we have for material things, that greed can be shifted for Krishna Bhakti, for knowing Krishna, for serving Krishna, for serving Krishna's pure devotees, for serving the Krishna conscious cause. We should have greed for that. So that greed is, and Rupa Goswami explains in the book that he has compiled called Padyavali. In Padyavali, Rupa Goswami, how many of you have heard of Padyavali? Nice. So in Padyavali, he has taken wonderful uh, shlokas related to pure devotional service from different composers. And what he's done is put it together. It is not that he has composed all of them. He has composed some, but what he has done is he has taken the compositions from various different first class Vaishnavas and put them into a book called Padyavali. So in Padyavali, Rupa Goswami mentions that what is the price for pure devotional service? So, for example, everything in this world has a price. If I want to go to India or I want to go back to Canada, then I have to pay a price for the ticket, whatever the price is, whatever euros or dollars. If you want to buy a simple thing like a table, you go to the market, you pay the price and you get it. So what is the price for pure devotional service, for bhakti? So the price is, our, in Padyavali, there's a wonderful Sanskrit sloka and the essence of the sloka is, the price is pure greed. We should be greedy. Greedy for Krishna consciousness. And that is what we, that is the only price we can purchase. And wherever you find it, you should purchase it immediately. We even sing in the Mangal Arti. What do we sing? Verse number huh? five. What is that? Sri Radhika Madhavya Rapara Madhurya Leela Guna Rupa Nam Nam Prati Shana Aswadana Lolupasya Vande Guru Sri Charnaravinda. The pure devotee like Srila Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, all our wonderful Acharyas on the altar, and, and those who are diving deep into devotional service, what are they doing? They're always engaged in, with a lot of greed, narrating. The unlimited pastimes, the sweet Madhurya, the amorous pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Sri Radhika Madhavya Rapara. Apar means unlimited. Sri Radhika Madhavya Rapara Madhurya Leela means the, the sweet, sweet Madhurya, the amorous pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And how, how does he do it? Pratishana, every moment. And even though it is every moment, how? Further, it is explained, uh, lolopasya, with a lot of greed. So if we have greed, we can use that quality to doubt it, to, to become advanced in Krishna consciousness. Greed to <coughs> obtain Krishna. Greed to obtain his service. Etc. So, now, this quality of greed comes to us from Krishna. Everything emanates from Krishna. Janmadi Yasya. Janmadi means uh, the entire birth of all everything. Qualities, worlds, expansions, the jivas, the souls, external energy, internal energy, everything in the material world, Krishna is the source. Sarva Karana Karanam. So, this greed is also there in Krishna. And that is the reason why we have it here. So, so Krishna's greed, for example, Lord Vishnu is greedy. How is he greedy? He wanted to execute and had the greed to fight. Now in Vaikuntha, nobody will fight with him because of his opulence. He is revered. Everybody touches his lotus feet. Everybody reveres him. Who can dare fight with Vishnu or Narayana in Vaikuntha? Nobody. But he had that greed that I would like to 
and he wanted to find this appropriate match, not just anybody. So then he arranged for this pastime how Jay and Vijay get cursed by the four Kumaras. And then they come down and then they become who? Hiranya and Hiranaksha in the first birth. In the second birth, they become Ravana Ravan and Kumbhakarna. In the third birth, Shishupal and Dantavakra. And when Krishna came in the Dwapadyu. So then Krishna could display his promise, his spirit of fighting. Because even this fighting spirit is a Kshatriya spirit. Because it is in Krishna, we have that. We cannot have any qualities if Krishna doesn't have it. All the qualities, anything. But the only difference is we are very minute in quantity. And he has got a huge magnitude. We have got infinite decimal. So Vishnu has that greed. Then Narsingadev, he also has a greed. It is said that Narsingadev, when he appeared and when he uh, killed Hiranyakashipu, and then he was so pleased with Prahlad that he actually picked up Prahlad. You see that famous picture where he's coming with the garland? Prahlad Maharaj. He's actually being sent by the demigods, like by Lord Brahma, because he, he's Ugra Narsingadev. He's so angry at Hiranyakashipu that particular form of Narsingha Dev is called Ugra. Ugra Narsingha. Very angry. Nobody can come in front of him. Because he's so angry that his devotee Prahlad, an innocent boy, was treated like this. Where a powerful demon tried to kill him. So you can imagine, like if you have your own little son and some adult is trying to abuse him, how angry you will be? You will want to kill him with whatever you can. Right? For child abuse, especially if it is your child. Right? So child abuse was even back then in the Satya Yuga. <laughs> Narsingadev Bhagwan actually was the first one in one sense who put a stop to it. <laughs> <laughs> and he came in a very, very angry form. Even after he killed him, he was angry. You see Ugra Narsingha in, in, in Mayapur. Like that. Even after, he's not calmed down. So Brahma is saying, first asking Lakshmi Devi, you go. Lakshmi says, no, 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 I can't. My husband is so angry. I've never seen him like this. I don't know what will happen. Devi goes, Brahma, Shiva, everybody, nobody goes near. And finally said, who can be sent? Prahlad. So Prahlad is sent forth. And Prahlad is not afraid. He goes with a nice garland and Narsingha Dev accepts the garland and puts him on his lap. And he smells his head like that. And he pats him on the head. And Narsingha Dev Bhagavan becomes very calm. And then what happens, at that time the greed in Narsingha Dev, he saw that Prahlad was so happy because he is receiving the fatherly love from Narsingha Dev. Parental love or Vatsile love. Please try to understand this point. And you can have one of these here. <clears throat> so when Narsingha Dev so when Narsingha Dev puts Prahlad on his lap he develops a special greed Narsingha Dev develops a special greed because he sees Prahlad very happy and he also feels a very special bond like a parent Vatsalyaras you have heard of this term right there are five rasas or mellows that one can reciprocate with Krishna or one can build a relationship with. One is a neutral relationship known as Shantras. The second relationship is known as Dasyaras. The third or Dasyaras means in servitorship. And most of the devotees who are in Vaikuntha are in that rasa. Where there is awe and reverence and they say and most of not only Vaikuntha, most of the faiths in this world, whether it is Christianity, Islam, Judaism, any, they all consider God as very superior and they consider him as their caretaker, as their, as their master, as their bread giver. Everybody is God fearing. Is it true or not? But Prabhupada said, don't be God fearing, be God loving. And that is the difference and we will talk about that once we reach Mahaprabhu. We haven't reached there yet. <laughs> so, the love of God is very rare. 
So, so Narsingha Dev is used to the opulence and the awe and reverence. But when Prahlad Maharaj sat on his lap, Narsingha Dev felt a sudden special mellow or rasa, like a fatherly love. And Prahlad was so happy, just like playing on a father's lap. So when he saw that, Narsingha Dev Bhagawan developed a greed that from now on, whenever I come, I will take birth. Like he was born of a pillar. So he cannot have that love, that, that parental love from a pillar. So after nursing a day, nursing a day decided that I will. So all the avatars that came after nursing a day, it is said, he, he always was born to parents so that he could relish that vatsalya ras. He could, so that greed was in nursing a day also. There is like that. There are so many examples of greed that God Himself or Krishna Himself or His expansions, they feel that. Like for example, Ramachandra, Lord Ramachandra had this greed also. What was his greed? His greed was that he had taken the vow, he was Maryada Purushottam, of only one, one wife. And also there was separation caused artificially because he wanted to make uh, the, the subjects of Ayodhya happy. So you know that Leela, I don't really have too much time to go into it. But one of the washerman's complained uh, that, you know, one night, one washerman's wife went across the river and could not come back at night on time because there was a storm. She went to give the wash clothes and she went across the river. And on the way back in the evening, a very bad storm happened and she could not cross. There was nobody to help her cross the river, no boat, nothing. So she had to unfortunately stay that night in that town. So the next day when she came back, her husband rejected her and her husband was kind of drunk also. He was in a drunken state and he says, I am not Ram to take you back. You stayed outside the house for one night. Don't think I am Ram. And when Lord Ramachandra heard that, he was extremely upset. He said, yes, Sita was staying because she was kidnapped by Ravan and she was staying in Lanka for a long time. Right? And then he brought her back. But obviously there were all these tests and everything, fire tests and all. But even then, because he was the ideal king, he had to put a stone on his heart and a stone on the, on, 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 on the heart of Sita. And she, he banished Sita in the forest. So due to that, Lord Ramachandra could not have that greed of proper love in separation. Please try to understand that. It was kind of forced upon him. It was not willing. It was not willing. It is something that he had to do out of discipline. So due to that, he had developed this greed. That yes, I would love to. I have done so much injustice to my wife Sita. So maybe you know what I should do. That greed developed in him. In my next birth, when I come as my original personality of God in a Sri Krishna, I want to reciprocate with my wife who is an expansion of Radha very freely and even the separation that is caused that will be very painful but it will be sweet and painful a combination of both but whereas in Ramachandra's separation it was only painful 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 there was no sweetness there so that greed Lord Ramachandra developed and that was when he and not only that when he was in the forest of Dandakaranya forest at that time many rishis who saw the beauty of Ram, uh, they wanted, they desired that they have a husband like Ram. And even uh, personalities like uh, Shurpankha, the demoness, the sister of, of uh, Ravan, she was enamored by the beauty of Ram. So she came and said, marry me please, leave this Sita. You know, and she said, I have this beauty. And she showed her beauty through her illusory potency that she had and she became the very beautiful and Ram said no sorry I have taken a vow for only one lady in my life one wife but Lakshman has not you go to him <laughs> he is a Kshatriya king and he can marry thousands if he wants <laughs> so like that she said no okay you can keep Sita and you keep me too and he said no I can't do that okay I will become a servant to Sita, I will become Sita's Dasi, but please accept me. 
Ramchandra Bhagavan said, I can't, please understand. I have taken a vow. Ragukula Niti Sadachali Ay Prana Jaya Par Vachana Na Jaya. In Ramayana it is said that it is the way of the people from the Ragu dynasty. When they say something, once it's said, their life will go. But they will never go back on their word. So he had already taken that vow. So he says, go to Lakshman. So when she goes to Lakshman, Lakshman cuts off her nose. <laughs> uh, get out of here. Out of here, you witch. Uh, you're trying to spoil our... <laughs> so anyways, so all these ladies, all these matas, all these rishis in the Dandakarnya forest, they wanted to, but so who can, who can fulfill that desire? Krishna can. So Krishna then, he married 16,108 queens or wives and these were all in Treta Yuga, they were all these rishis or some of these ladies who wanted Ramchandra as their husband. So Krishna fulfilled that desire. So that greed was there in the devotee and that greed was there to fulfill the devotee's desire. So Ramachandra also develops this greed. Huh? And thus he comes as Krishna. Or rather Krishna uh, in his original form. So like this, one time in Golok Vrindavan, In Golok Vrindavan, we have, how can I explain this in a very simple form? There are also teams. There are teams that love Krishna. Okay? Or we can say groups. So one group is the leftist group of Srimati Radharani. And she has her eight principal friends, or the Astasakis, headed by Lalita and Vishaka. And on the right wing is another gopi, who heads that group, who is Chandravadi. And the major difference between these two groups is, the first group, Chandravali, meaning the right wing, they are very subservient to Krishna. Krishna, we are yours. What is their theme? What is their theme? We are yours. And you treat us any way you want. No problem. But Radharani's group, is aggressive. You are mine. You do exactly as I say. Huh? We say dance, you dance. We say sit, you sit. We say stand up, you stand up. And Krishna very lovingly does that. So there is a difference. And Krishna actually loves that. Because there is nobody in this creation that can make him sit or dance or you know for one laddu. Even when he was little. Krishna come here. Take, I will give you a nice laddu if you perform a nice dance for me and sing a song. And this baby Krishna was cute, going around in circles and dancing and then accepting the laddu with a lot of happiness. Sometimes the gopis would tell, Krishna, Balram, you both have a wrestling match and whoever wins, we will get the biggest laddu. And then the two boys, they're only three years old. They will smack their thighs and their arms just to please them and they go into wrestling and the gopis would laugh so gopis would control them like that <laughs> and when of course in their in their kishore or in their original forms in his original form as the young son of nanda maharaj kishore krishna is controlled completely with the sweetness of the of the of the gopis of raj especially the camp of radharani and especially radharani herself so one time it so happened that Krishna, Radharani is sitting in her kunja. You, everybody knows the word kunja? How many know the, have, have heard the word kunja? Have, how many of you been to Vrindavan? All of you. So in Vrindavan there are kunjas. What are kunjas? Kunjas are natural sort of rooms that are created by trees. By the intermingling of their branches. Have you been to Nidhiwan? Anybody remember? Yeah? So there are groves. And they form a nice place. Where you can get a shade. And some of them are big. They're as big as probably this room. Or more bigger than this room. Beautiful. Full of fragrant flowers. They grow. The creepers are very pretty. 
And it is said that they are also full of gems and diamonds and rubies. It's amazing. Chintamani, Prakarasad Masu, Kalpa Vriksha, Lakshatvateshu. And there are thousands and thousands of desire trees, Kalpa Vrikshas. So they form a beautiful bower. And Radha and Krishna generally are enacting their intimate pastimes in those kunjas, in those naturally formed rooms that are formed by the trees. They sit there and they have their loving pastimes, their amorous pastimes. And Radharani is expert. The gopis, her friends are expert in decorating the kunja. They know that Krishna is coming very soon. Just like those who are disciples of A.C. Bhakti or Swami Srila Prabhupada or even our own gurus, when we, have, we know that he is coming, so we decorate the Vyasasan very nicely, nice flowers. Sometimes due to separation, we haven't seen him for a long time. Right from the airport, we have seen that Prabhupada, when he gets off the plane, there was a red carpet and there were flowers strewn all along the way till Prabhupada huh, to the temple. And then when he came to the temple, his Vyasasana was decorated so nicely, so beautifully. So this is for the pleasure of Guru. So for the pleasure of Krishna, the gopis and Radharani also decorate the kunja very nicely. So Radharani and the gopis have decorated the kunja so nicely. Radharani gives the final touches and now they are waiting and waiting and waiting and Krishna doesn't show up. Krishna is late. He's not there. And sometimes they hear the breeze that is shaking the leaves outside the kunja. And oh, Sham Sundar has come and they're all happy. But then one of the gopis says it's only the leaves shaking. <laughs> and they are disappointed. So, so much love they have that even by the hearing of the leaves in the wind, they think that Shamsundar has come. Krishna has arrived. Krishna doesn't show up. So one time, then after waiting a long time, Radharani is upset. She starts crying. So Lalita sends one of her messengers, Duti. She is called a Duti. Duti is for male and Duti is for female. So her her perhaps one of the manjaris. Manjaris are young gopis, younger than the the full fledged uh, gopis that are there, and our.